What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. So last night we had the leaders debate on BBC and it was a complete bore fest. There was a few good points in it. We're going to take a look at one today and a couple of articles that are connected with this story. As some of you might remember, Boris Johnson pointed out that Jeremy Corbyn has supported the IRA for the last 40 years which is something I've pointed out on this channel many times. But what was most telling about that interaction was the fact that Jeremy Corbyn refused to say that he supported them until he was pushed again, much like the anti-Semitism debacle on The Andrew Neil Show, where he refused to just straight up be honest. You know, the usual Jeremy Corbyn, because of course, he's proud of what he done in terms of the IRA and supporting them against Britain, because this is what he does. Now before we watch the clip we'll take a look at the Mail's article and then after the clip we'll take a look at a Sun article which has just come to light regarding Jeremy Corbyn co-sponsoring a Republican event with a convicted terrorist back in 1983 in his North London constituency. So let's take a look at this article first. It headlines, Boris Johnson points out Jeremy Corbyn supported the IRA for four decades and forces Labour leader to deny he wants to disband MI5 in bitter clash over security. Boris Johnson has used Jeremy Corbyn's long-standing support for the IRA to undermine the Labour leader's security credentials as the race for number 10 enters the home stretch. Like Boris Johnson really needed to undermine the Labour leader's security credentials. The guy has none. He's friends with terrorists. You couldn't trust him with any secret information like that. In a fiery exchange at Friday's BBC head-to-head -head in Maidstone, the PM used a question about the union to dredge up his rival's sympathies with the terrorist nationalists. He said, as you will see in a minute, I do find it curious to be lectured about the union between Great Britain and Northern Ireland by a man who all his political life has campaigned to break up that union and who supported for four decades the IRA in their campaign violently to destroy it. I must say, I find it a curiosity. Now, obviously, we find it more than a curiosity. It's absolutely disgusting and completely abhorrent that this guy's even able to run in the general election, if you ask me. Mr. Johnson's blistering attack prompted thunderous applause from the studio audience, who were otherwise relatively muted during the hour-long program. I wouldn't really call it thunderous applause. It was an applause, but it wasn't thunderous. Mr. Corbyn, who has been dogged by his relationship with the IRA since he became leader in 2015, deflected by veering the conversation onto Mr. Johnson's Brexit deal. But he was later forced to rubbish one of the Tory central attack lines that he wants to scrap the intelligence services. The Labour leader said, there are no plans to disband MI5. Yeah, there's no plans yet, but we know him and Diane Abbott would like to do it. Although there is questions as to whether she thinks it might be a motorway. The jury's out. Or is that racist? I don't know. I can't remember. Apparently inferring someone might be a bit thick these days constitutes racism, but I don't know. When the leaders were asked about balancing the needs of security against human rights in the wake of last Friday's terrorism, Mr Corbyn said what happened on the streets of London was utterly appalling, and I very moved by what Jack Merritt's father said about what his son was trying to do. Yeah, and on the uh, Jack Merritt's father situation, the guy ran around screaming he didn't want it politicised and then you can go and check his Twitter now and see him constantly politicising his son's death. It's absolutely disgraceful in my opinion, but it's not the topic of this video so let's move on. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to read nothing out about it for that exact reason. And the rest of the article literally just goes on about other shit not related to this video. So let's check out the clip relating to this article and see Jeremy Corbyn deflect the question as is usual. Like I said, he did the same with anti-Semitism. Briefly, Mr. Gordon, for people who didn't hear the news, what are you claiming the documents show? And then we'll put it to Mr. They Johnson. show quite clearly that there are going to be charges, there are going to be customs checks, there are going to be restrictions on trade between Britain and Northern Ireland. Thank you very much. Boris Johnson. Well, uh, actually, that is not true. The whole of the UK comes out... Uh, England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. Together, we do free trade deals together. Northern Ireland is part of the customs territory of the, of the UK, and we are united. And I, I have to say, uh, I, I think it's so a great opportunity for our country. Then? And uh, it says so, unfettered access, I think is what it says. It says uh, unfettered the access, market. and also it and questions is, the, and, and question that is the fettering will, that will happen. That is what, what we will one, have. One and, time, please. And, and, that is, and what, the, what the document also says is that Northern Ireland is part of the customs territory of the UK. You know, isn't, that, isn't the problem, Mr say, Johnson, that the DUP, say, the unionists who were your partners, they agree with him and not you well, about that? they don't, actually, that. because, because uh, our deal is a great deal. Well, let me just make one, one point. I do find it slightly curious, to say the least, Nick, to be lectured about the union between Great Britain and Northern Ireland by a man who all his life 
uh, political life has campaigned to break up that union and actually supported for four decades the IRA in their campaign vi violently, violently to destroy it. I, I must say I find it a curiosity. Jeremy Corbyn, what's your answer to that? the Prime Minister showing a degree of honesty about the arrangements he's actually made with Northern Ireland? He spoke at a DUP conference and said there would be no restrictions sure. whatsoever. We now know there are restrictions. He should and could have said that at the time. And so it is a question of openness on all of this. But being when... open, he says, you've supported uh, people who are opposed to the union your whole life. You don't even believe what in I've the United What I've done Kingdom. is always wanted to see a peace process in Northern Ireland, and that is exactly what we've got. And thank you to the Labour government that negotiated it after 19... Now, gentlemen, briefly... Thank you. <laughs> so, what... so there you see it. Corbyn literally just stood there and deflected the question, as we have all come to expect from him in this day and age, I think. He never just straight up answers. I'm sorry, but if someone asked me or accused me of being a terrorist sympathiser and sympathising with the IRA for 40 years, I outright flat deny it there and then instantly. I don't sit there trying to go on about a Brexit deal or anything else. But supporting them in the way you supported them is not how you get the peace process going. These people were killing British civilians, you fucking idiot. British servicemen, British policemen, trying to kill politicians. And like I said, completely baffling that this guy is the Labour leader and able to even stand in the election to be Prime Minister. As a matter of fact, I'm shocked he's even allowed to be an MP. How can MPs be consorting with terrorists and still remain as an MP, an elected representative of this country? They shouldn't be allowed to stand. And then also when you factor it in with our next story that we have being reported by The Sun at the moment. Yes, I know no one likes The Sun, but they are reporting on it. They seem to have done the legwork on this story here. The Sun's article reads, Terrorist sympathiser, Jeremy Corbyn co-sponsored Irish Republican event alongside convicted IRA terrorists behind London bombings. Which is absolutely incredible considering Jeremy Corbyn himself is a London MP in charge of a London constituency. And, obviously, as we know, the IRA were running around bombing London while this dickhead co-sponsors events with convicted IRA terrorists. It says, fresh evidence of Jeremy Corbyn's links with the IRA can be exposed as the sun reveals he co-sponsored an Irish Republican event alongside a convicted IRA terrorist. The Labour leader was named as a sponsor at an Irish Solidarity Conference in 1983, calling for complete British withdrawal from Northern Ireland. That's not all it was calling for. A fellow sponsor of the conference was IRA terrorist Vincent Donnelly, who at the time was serving five life sentences and was described as a prisoner of war on a pamphlet for the event. Incredible. Mr Donnelly was a member of an active service unit of the IRA that was involved in planting a series of 16 bombs, 13 of which went off. Mr Donnelly was jailed in 1977 after a bomb he planted on a train destined for rush hour London exploded prematurely, injuring many of the passengers. So go on then, Jeremy Corbyn, I would love for you to explain to me how this guy can be considered a prisoner of war on a pamphlet for an event that you have co-sponsored when this says he's tried to kill innocent people, non-combatants, you know? That doesn't make him a prisoner of war. That would make him a war criminal if you want to go down them routes. But instead, he's just a terrorist. Now, he could be up in The Hague for war crimes if you really want to go on about prisoners of war. Because if you want to consider it a war and consider him an active participant in that war, he has openly and directly targeted civilians with this attack. That's a war crime. In his attempts to escape, he shot dead the train driver and shot and injured a post office engineer. He also shot at police. Well, we know that Jeremy Corbyn and the rest of these Labour shit weasels don't care about the old bill. People like Diane Abbott, we know what they're about when it comes to the police and the sort of things they would do with it. Removing powers, getting rid of MI5, the works. Mr Donnelly was released in 1998 under the Good Friday Agreement. Should never have been released, he killed people. Tried to kill other people, shot at police and set off a bomb. I mean, come on. The pamphlet for the event which took place in Mr Corbyn's Islington North constituency on October the 2nd, 1983, called for all prisoners of war, like Mr Donnelly, to be repatriated to Ireland. He is not a prisoner of war. I've gone over that enough. It's actually annoying that he was considered that. And it also demanded a referendum on Uniting Ireland. Our revelation reveals further evidence of Mr Corbyn's close association and solidarity with convicted IRA terrorists, with less than a week to go until polling day. But on Thursday night, Labour insisted Mr Corbyn only supported the event because he was trying to bring about peace in Northern Ireland. A Labour Party spokesman said Jeremy Corbyn has always worked towards peace in Northern Ireland 
and represents a significant Irish community as a constituency MP. Okay then, so what's your excuse for supporting Hezbollah, Hamas and whoever else that you support? It's just bollocks. Come on, Labour. We know it's all bollocks. We know you're in an election thing. You've got to try and defend him, but it's indefensible at the end of the day. He has also spoken about how the peace process in Northern Ireland has been a model for other countries trying to bring divided communities together on the basis of recognising different traditions. And this is the event poster here that he co-sponsored. Irish Solidarity Demonstration. Complete British withdrawal from Ireland. Self-determination for the Irish people the right of repatriation for all POWs. They're not POWs. Build a united Irish solidarity movement, Saturday the 2nd of October 1983, from this time to this time, Caxton House, St John's Way, Archway, London, N19, speakers. David Reid, Michael Holden, Alistair Logan, Mrs Hill and Helen O'Brien. Event sponsored by Vincent Donnelly, POW, fuck off. War criminal. If you want to call him a POW, he should be called a war criminal, but instead we'll call him terrorist scum. Graham Little, Jimmy Anderson, Ricky Wentham, where is Jeremy Corbyn? There we go, Jeremy Corbyn, Labour MP. And then we have down here, Keith Venns, Islington Labour Party councillor, Tony Rainford, Liverpool Labour Party councillor, Revolu Revolutionary Communist Group, Revolutionary Communist League, Red Action, Scottish Socialist Republicans Club, Scottish Socialist Republicans Party. So the type of people you would expect there with the Corbinated Chicken. We can see that his affiliations haven't really changed in 30 or 40 years. And here we have Jeremy Corbyn with Irish Republican leader Jerry Adams. Jerry Adams again. Martin McGuinness. Gerard McLaughlin there. Labour Chief John McDonald and Jeremy Corbyn with Jerry Adams there. Jeremy Corbyn's Jerry Adams and Martin McGuinness at a Labour MP Tony Benn's funeral. Jeremy Corbyn meeting Sinn Féin leaders Jerry Adams and Martin McGuinness in the House of Commons. So, there's all of them. These are probably more relevant to the times we were talking about in this video here. But it's pretty damning. We can see the sort of people this cunt consorts with and the things that he supports. He is literally the most abhorrent scum you could possibly bring there. Never mind the fact that he's Labour, Tory, anything like that, right, left. Just the fact that he supports terrorists and terrorist groups makes him the absolute scum of the earth in my opinion. And the fact that, as you see in the video earlier, he didn't just flat out deny it makes me think that he's proud of what he'd done and would continue to do it again and again. It's absolutely disgraceful. And I can't wait for this toss pot to lose this election. Well, I actually hope he will. But on that note, I will end the video there, guys. I want to thank the channel's PayPal, Patreon, Subscribestar and YouTube members for supporting the channel, along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Leave a like. Subscribe with the notification bell and share this video as it helps the channel a lot. And I'll see you all in the next one. This parliament is a dead parliament. It should no longer sit. It has no moral right to sit on these green benches. They don't like the truth. Twice they have been asked to let the electorate decide upon whether they should continue to sit in their seats while they block 17.4 million people's votes. This parliament is a disgrace. But they're too cowardly to give it away. But the time is coming. The time is coming, Mr. Speaker, when even these turkeys won't be able to prevent Christmas. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. And that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off.